Hey there, my name is Rohit Kumar, and today we are going to discuss another very important data set, which is ShapeNet. So, why ShapeNet? Why it is important, and in which particular area you can use this particular data set? What are the different categories, and what are the different classes, objects, etc., covered in this particular data set? All these things we are going to discuss in this particular video. So, let's start. So, this is uh, the homepage shapenet.org. So, you can go there and you can just open this page when you want to work on to this particular data set. And uh, before uh, starting, means before working on to this particular data set, you are supposed to sign in or create an account. So, here it is clearly mentioned that uh, you need to be a kind of registered user then only you are supposed to work on to this. Now coming to the details of the shipment. So it's a kind of ongoing effort. Here it is written over. So you can clearly see that it is an ongoing effort, means it is not like this that they have created the data set and the journey is done. So they are continuously improving it and most of the data set creators do like that. They continuously improve their data sets just to cater the needs of the future generation researchers. And it is the ideal pressure is because every data set need to be updated with time. Otherwise, its importance goes kind of obsolete. So here it establishes a rich annotated large scale data set. So two things are available here. First thing means highly rich in annotation. Second thing that it is large scale. Both are quite important. Why this annotation is important? Because if the good annotation is not available, then it's a difficult to categorize the things, it's a difficult to identify the things. Additionally, it's a difficult for your training model, etc. Coming to the large scale data set, again, the uh, kind of complementary things that if the data set is very small or uh, uh, very low in size, then the point is that uh, it is not helpful for a number of techniques and especially after the introduction of deep learning, it's a highly recommended that your data set is means it should be very large. So the more training you give to your model, that's better because that is going to cover the general perspective of your training. But if you are giving only a very concise uh, size uh, data set uh, for your deep learning model or some uh, machine learning model, then it is going to be a difficult. Machine learning may work, but deep learning, obviously, you know very well that uh, is not going to cover the needs. So coming to the, the point that uh, it's a uh, richly annotated, it is large scale, but it is a data set of what? So here it is written that it is a data set of 3D images. 3D images means uh, 3D shapes, and uh, ultimately those shapes are in the form of images. So those are provided to the researchers and just to enable them to do the research in the field of uh, robotics, because in robotics you do have these sort of uh, sensory images uh, that uh, um, the robot uh, or the different sorts of robotic uh, uh, arms uh, they do perceive from the real world environment. Additionally, you may go for the computer graphics, you may go to the field of vision, etc. Now, if you are a particular uh, domain interested person and uh, that particular data set means the whole data set is not interested to you, then it is a uh, always recommended that you should go for the refinement of the data set. It means you choose a particular category. It is not like this that the whole data set is available, so you need to go for that. Look for the interesting images that suits your research interest, and then you can separate them out, and then you can create your own data set. So again, the terms and uh, policies, uh, those are supposed to be followed. If the data set owners, they are not allowing any sort of boundation, then it's very good. Otherwise, whatever they are asking, to give some citation or to give some, some sort of credit to them. So that is quite ethical. You should give them. So that's the only thing. Otherwise, uh, there is none to worry. So ShapeNet is a collaborative effort and uh, effort between uh, the researchers uh, at Princeton, Stanford, and TIC. Then uh, if you are interested, then uh, you can go for the uh, taxonomy. You can go for the models because different sorts of models are available here. So these sort of details you will find over here. Now, when we are saying that different sorts of models and everything is available over here and it's a large scale. So uh, how large means what is the actual size? So this uh, data set contains uh, over 300 million models. And if I'm saying like this, then you should consider that how big it is going to be. Additionally, 
it is uh, classified into more than 3000 classes and uh, then the parts uh, are going to have the subsets so subsets are again more than 30000 so in this way different sorts of categories are available and different sorts of object classes are also available in the form of table chair etc so if you are uh, interested in a particular kind of object images then you can go and have your research perspective uh, explored and uh, further based on your research perspective you can personally experience that uh, what sort of images what uh, sort of angle what sort of lighting what sort of detailing of a particular object is good enough for your research so all these things are together are going to help you out still if you are not satisfied with the data set then there are with respect to any data set there are always two three competitors means the similar sort of data sets you can go for them like uh, for shapenet you have the uh, shapenet core you have the scannet etc so you can go for them and have your kind of work that you are interested in now coming to the point that uh, we are having different sorts of works but what sort of thing that you can do on this uh, shapenet so there are different sorts of things that people have done, but uh, particularly people have gone for the uh, kind of 3D reconstruction. People have gone for the semantic segmentation. People have used the novel view synthesis or the point cloud generation, et cetera. So these sort of things uh, you can also do. Additionally, there are a number of works available which have used this particular data set because they're quite popular data set. So let me tell you one or two that uh, information which is 3D model repository, uh, which is the kind of original paper for this particular work is uh, published, which is having a title ShipNet. Additionally, the mesh is RCNN, is another popular work which people have used for a number of references. And uh, similar sort of uh, the Get3D, Tallinn, et cetera. Uh, these are some of the related works. So if you go for Google Scholar, then there you, you can find all these details quite easily. My point is just to tell you that this particular data set is useful in a number of ways. The modalities covered are images, 3D, and the point cloud. And if you are interested in a particular sort of object only, then you can always create a particular means personalized category for your reference from this particular data set. So that's all from my side for this particular data set. If you are interested in any other detail, then I think you should go down and you can look on to the different related news are covered here. So you can see that the news and all the related coverage is also provided. Additionally, if you are interested in more details, as I told you, it's recommended that just sign in or create the account. And when you enter into the account, then obviously the more details are waiting. Coming down to the last thing, uh, it should have been the first thing, but I'm telling you in the last that uh, if you're interested there, obviously you can download. Here it is the uh, download option, then the API challenges and uh, some of the related resources are also available. So many times these things look uh, small or look easy, but uh, those are not uh, so easy. So it's my suggestion that uh, whenever you are going for a particular uh, kind of thing, uh, means a particular kind of uh, uh, behavior in uh, this sort of sites, means any research sites, then always look for the kind of options that are available in your hand. For example, the resources. Resources are very, very useful whenever dealing with a large scale data sets uh, like ShipNet, because they are going to I give you the number of tools which are having uh, some sort of potential to help you out. Additionally, some of the related publications might be offered to you. For example, they have given over here. Similarly, if you are interested in taxonomy or the model cure, etc., they have given uh, these options here, then the annotations related information is also provided. I'm not going down into much detail because then the video will go very large. That is not good from uh, the basic introduction perspective. Then the related API support is available over here. Then some of the related challenges with respect to different uh, popular places are listed down here. Then some of the basic information means uh, what is shape net, et cetera, et cetera, and the option answer forms are for. So that's all from my side. Hope oh, you must have liked all these things. And still, if you have any doubt or query, please do contact. You can criticize the video or any of the things that you didn't like, just comment down below and please let me know.
this will help me to improve the videos further and definitely i'll incorporate all the suggestions in my future videos thanks for watching and happy learning